All right, the moment the patrol officers at Thibodeau PD have been waiting and watching and probably got little TVs in their units for is uh, the chief is bringing on Joe. And uh, Joe said he got this, though, Chief. He's got it. <laughs> All right. So uh, what we're going to talk about now, we're going to let Joe uh, yeah. explain a few things. What's he going to explain for well, me? Well, I just wanted to bring it I wanted to bring it to the, uh, the boots on the ground. And, and Joe is the guy on the ground making things happen. Uh, several months ago, he stepped and he volunteered, and he asked for this position. This guy's got two years on, three years on the job, and, and asked, look, can I run the Thibodeau Housing Authority? I think I got what it takes. Okay. You, he's got a great personality, and you're going to see it in about a second. Uh, but what we wanted to show was, we take data, we took, you know, we take a real intelligence-led policing model, but we also combine it to old school policing, like the foot patrols and the bicycles. And what Joe's doing over in the housing uh, community, uh, housing authority community, he's taking the data and, he, and he's going out and, and he's putting it to practical use. Uh, just, like I said, his personality is, is in and of itself to win people over, but when he combines the, the, the more scientific aspect with the old school principles of just being decent and, and kind to people, you see the successes that we've seen in the housing authority. Yeah, very good. All right, so Joe, uh, good having you on board. Of course, also local. Uh, I like the way the local guys, you know, so they know the community uh, pretty well. Tell us a little bit about, you know, I remember riding in the housing uh, sections when we would do the beat and all of that. And like the chief said a while ago, things sort of morph and it's fluid. Things change yes. all the time, but you volunteer for this position. So what, first of all, what made you volunteer for it? You obviously thought you could handle it, and, and what do you do? What, what sort of your portfolio going in there to make it work? Well, what made me volunteer for it was the fact that I worked under two different commanders, and both of them were some great guys to work for. And one thing that they really focused on was being in touch and contact with the community. Mm -hmm. Actually, not just sitting in the office all day long, they actually get out there, mingle with the people, talk to them, meet the kids, learn their concerns, and different things of that nature. And when the job came available, I felt like, well, I didn't see Sergeant Brooks do this type of work before, and he was great at it. So I can just fill in for him and maybe do some of the things differently that he did to make it a better place for the Thibodeau Housing Authority. Now, when you're riding in these areas, and, and I've seen it, I've witnessed officers doing it, when you roll your window down and you know John Doe or Jane Doe out there, and you sit there and call them by name and you talk to them. Gives you a pretty good handle of what's going on and they may key you into something else that's going on, right? Yeah, they do. And honestly, when you pass by and you see a group of guys, they may be standing in someone's driveway or standing in the yard and they so used to the cops just passing by, they may wave, may not wave and just continually drive forward. With me, I, I like to pull on the side, I get out the unit and I go in, in the yard, shake everyone's hands and, and we talk. That way they can see that even though I'm a police officer, mm -hmm. I still am a person right. outside of uniform and still in this uniform and just have a good sense of humor, getting to know each and, one, each and every one of them. Now does it take, what, what do you think is the norm, and I, I guess people are different, but when you stop a unit and you get out, not always the friendliest, they're not always the friendliest people on the first go around, but maybe second or third time around, you think you got them? Yeah, well at first when you, first, at first when I started getting out of the unit, they started fidgeting and looking to run or something of that nature. <laughs> but once they realized that, hey, man, you know, Perry was just getting out just to shoot the breeze with us, talk a little sports or something. He's, he's a cool guy. He's a, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a guy. And yeah. they, they sit there now they, they look for me. If I pass them up there, get in the middle of the road, wave their hands, I turn around. We go back, we talk, laugh, have a little good time. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure you work a little advice in there, too, with them on the right things to do and that type of thing. I'm sure you meet a lot of young uh, adults in those communities where they need some guidance. So do you often give guidance to a few? Yes. A lot of the young adults in the community, they, some of them may not have a job and ask, hey, you know anyone hiring or could I be a police officer and different things of that nature. And I just give them the best advice possible that, that suits them. And, and Todd and Chief, I guess the key is in listening to Joe, you're right. He has a great personality. But you gotta, you got to pick the right personality to put in an area because the wrong personality can backfire on you, can't You're right. And, you know, we, we preach community policing, community policing. We want to be transparent and accountable to the community within which we serve. So you're right. When, when a young guy with, with three years comes up and says, Chief, I want that job. Well, that's great. I appreciate your enthusiasm. But then I have to evaluate, does he really have the skill set to make it happen? 
And you know, I look back at his productivity as an officer, not just arrests and citations, I look for the tangible things where how well respected is he amongst his peers. You know, they, they work in that, that, he commands that housing authority section, but he, st he doesn't work on an island. Uh, he works within the confines of, or, or within the uh, resources of the entire patrol division. Mm -hmm. So Joe's the guy that'll call over the guys from the sheriff's office to come on over and join him, or the guys from shift to come over. And look, let's get down and let's go walk this area. Let's go talk to people. And that's what I saw in Joe, not just his statistical productivity, but, but the tangi intangible things, such as his personality. I mean, the guy's got, like you said, he's got a great smile. You got to yeah. use it at some mm -hmm. point. But, uh, but that, it just, he's the example. He is the face of Thibodeau Police Department. He's a young, intelligent, energetic guy. He's committed to the community. And look, I told you, I inherited these guys are blessings, and I'm glad to have them. And he said during the break that he was at a better batting average than Todd. So <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. No, I made that up. All right. So uh, now one of my favorite things that we're going to jump into, the DDAX, which I, you know, I just think that's great policing. So uh, let's talk about that. we got about five minutes left, so that's a good way to okay. close out with Facebook and then the web page. Let's talk about DDAX a little sure. bit. Well, what we did was, again, it's a, it's a program that I was able to help pilot three years ago when I was at the sheriff's office. There were six agencies across the country, and we were one of them. So uh, it was pretty successful. We had, we had uh, good numbers at the, at the SO. When I came to the police department, I, I would have been remiss had I not implemented it right off the bat. And I made it the cornerstone of the organizational ideal, the paradigm of intelligence-led policing. And what we did was we, we implemented a, what they call a hotspot. And what you do is you look at your data throughout the entire city, and then you create a location that's, that has high incidence of crashes, high incidence of crime, and, um, and based on that, that's when you start allocating your, your officers in a specific area. So let's say we take an area, and I'm not saying they're bad areas, they're just areas that have been victimized of late by crashes and crime. So what you do is once we identify these spots, uh, what I like to do is do a temporal analysis where I look at all 24 hours in the day, pick the highest two days of the week, uh, or the highest two hours in that time slot, and we allocate one officer. It's an investment of two hours in a 24-hour pie, and these are the results that we get. We, we had our first uh, initial deployment into uh, one uh, hot spot, and we've seen reductions of crashes by 64%, burglaries down 85%, criminal damage down 32%. Uh, well, then we saw those successes, so we moved over to a second hot spot. Mm -hmm. uh, by this time, my analysts had become a little more sophisticated in the data uh, extraction process and, and analysis and dissemination progress, so we were able to take three years of data, and we actually have a graph for this location. Uh, where we're at, we took 10 weeks prior to, compared it to 10 weeks in, and just some of the results after three years of high crime and crash location, and what we're doing is reducing social harm uh, in these areas. But you can see the, the reductions in burglaries and thefts and, and criminal damage properties, and and 75% reduction in auto crashes. That's and incredible stat. It really is. In 10 weeks, we've been able to affect change. And I believe in being an agent of change, Martin. Mm -hmm. And when you use your resources and your information, uh, what we also do is, and I always kind of laugh about cops being really simplistic. We need these small visual bits of digestible data. And, and we, so we produce these maps through this crimereports.com. And what you're looking at is, that, that's an electronic pin map. Uh, the area that's got the, the green kind of looks like the amoebas in the central. That's where our, our hot spot number two is. And of course, the, the where there's no color, there's mean there's there's uh, a minimal crime to report. But as it turns blue to green, you're starting to see a higher frequency, a higher level of crime and crashes. Uh, within 10 weeks, this is the result. So we put that up on a 55-inch uh, screen in our patrol room. And, and obviously the less color, the less, the less uh, frequency of crashes and crime. But every day these guys come into work, they're looking at a, what we call a crime board, an intelligence board. And it's based on information from crimereports.com. And it's all based on the DDAX model of efficient, effective policing. Now, you have to be prepared also that once you go in there and do a great job of knocking it down, that they're going to probably move or morph a little bit. So you, then you get ready to go to your next. That's right, and you know you're talking you're talking about displacement, and that's always going to be the issue. It's like trying to put your finger on the mercury ball. It's going to disperse and it's going to go, but it's never going to be effective as it was in the first place. And a lot of folks they, they worry about displacement. We're just pushing crime from here to there, but even when it relocates, it never it never a one to one ratio of crime being committed. Well, it's even always when they're diminished. displacing, you're keeping them moving, and keeping them moving. They can't be doing crimes when they move and right. trying to find right. a safe safe place. So mm -hmm. you are disrupting it quite a bit. All right, let's talk about the. Got about a minute and a half sure. left, and I, and I appreciate y'all coming on board. Well, it's always good to see some of the, the gang out there that are helping you do a great job over there, and y'all do a great job. I appreciate it. Facebook and, and your web page. 
Yes, sir. Well, again, going back to the mayor's mandate that we're going to be absolutely accountable and transparent. When we invested in this off-the-shelf product, CrimeReports.com, I know I've repeated it, but, but I believe in it. It's a product that has allowed us to become data-driven and produce those maps. What we did was it's a web-based application. You go to our website, Thibodeau Police Department's homepage, and, and we also put it on our Facebook page. Um, and you can go and every week we put out a D-Dash report. We put out a city intelligence report. So we're, we're giving you the same information that my officers see. Uh, this is just a live feed from our Facebook page. Uh, but what we do, and, and also we, we started a campaign about a couple weeks ago to reach 1,000 friends. I think we're about at 752. But what we're trying to do, Martin, is we want to be absolutely transparent. What my officers see, you, the public can see. And through using this crime reports, it's a web-based application, and you go on there, and if you scroll down to the bottom of that screen, uh, that's from our last show, um, but that's that's a you tab on that, and it brings you to the crimereports.com. You can punch in your address. You see crimes. You can build in alerts. Uh, we we track all of our crashes and our crime, even our, our officer proactive activity, to where you know if you see crime, that's one issue. But we want you to actually see where our officers are, where we're doing foot patrols, where we're doing building checks, where we're making traffic stops. So these these type of activities really really fulfill the mayor's mandate of, of accountability and transparency. And it's loading right now. And unfortunately, we're out of time. So, chief. Todd, Joe, I appreciate y'all coming on. And uh, Joe, when you go back to the patrol room, you got him. You got him. You nailed it, huh? So that was good. I, I like to have fun with you guys, too. So that's pretty good. But thank you, Chief. We appreciate, appreciate you, you coming on all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have Laura Poole, Director of Women's Services at Terrebonne General Medical Center, and Julia Berg, Lactation Consultant, World Breastfeeding Month, coming up next. Don't go away.